Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, the 8th of November, and it's National STEM Day. And a big happy birthday to Gordon Ramsay, Matilda Ramsay, Benjamin Wadsworth, and Lauren Elena. The UN Climate Summit COP27 kicked off in Egypt with a dramatic opening address from Antonio Guterres, and we'll see two weeks of negotiations between countries on climate action. The UN Secretary-General, who's famous for not mincing his words, began by giving a stark warning for the future of our planet. We are in the fight of our lives, and we are losing. We are on a highway to climate hell, with our foot still on the accelerator. It comes as the UN warns the planet's already warmed 1.1 degrees since pre-industrial times and scientists say rises must be limited to 1.5 degrees to avoid the worst effects. But experts say we're on track for a rise as high as 2.8 degrees Celsius this century if we carry on with current policies. Rishi Sunak did eventually turn up and emphasise the importance of delivering on existing promises from Glasgow's COP26. We can turn our struggle against climate change into a global mission for new jobs and clean growth. Meanwhile, Boris Johnson was offered a fringe event taking a swipe at the Tory party for their stance on fracking, after including his successor Liz Truss, who had planned to lift the ban in England. The former Prime Minister attacked net zero naysayers. But there are people who've drawn the conclusion that the whole project of net zero needs to be delayed And, you know, for instance, we need to reopen coal-fired power stations and frack the hell out of the the British countryside. So I believe here at Sharm is a moment when we really have to tackle this nonsense head on. Labour leader Sakir Starmer has called for Sir Gavin Williamson to be sacked following the emergence of threatening and abusive texts sent by the senior minister to a female colleague. Rishi Sunak's under fire for bringing him back into government when he knew he was under investigation for allegedly bullying former Chief Whip Wendy Morton. Despite this, his claim to still have full confidence in him, which led Keir to question the PM's judgment. It's so disappointing that, yet again, we're having a discussion about the Prime Minister's judgment, this time in relation to Gavin Williamson. He's clearly got people around the Cabinet table who are not fit to be there. Meanwhile, Grant Shapps admitted Gavin Williamson was not right to send the messages. I always think never sort of send messages that you're going to regret in the in the cold light of day, as it were, and, and it was wrong that he sent them. And Labour's Nick Thomas-Simmons isn't pleased either. This is another of these grubby little deals to get Rishi Sunak the leadership of the Conservative Party. In Ukraine, President Zelensky's warned that four and a half million people face a bleak winter as Russia continues mass attacks on the power grid. Blackouts have been experienced across Ukraine and the mayor of Kiev has told people to prepare for the worst and suggested the whole city could be evacuated if there are total power blackouts. Vadim Pristaiko warned about the biggest threat facing Ukraine's power supply. But this bloody, the Iranian drones, this is the biggest problem. They're cheap, they're numbered, they're coming in a swarm. Very difficult to deal with. And Zelensky says they're preparing to respond to the Russian use of Iranian drones. We understand that the terrorist state is concentrating forces and means for a possible repetition of mass attacks on our infrastructure, first of all, energy. In particular for this, Russia needed Iranian missiles. We are preparing to respond. In the United States, the final hours of the midterms saw the Democratic and Republican parties making last-minute appeals for votes in the run-up to Tuesday's elections. All eyes are on a few key races for the US Senate that could decide which party controls the chamber with big implications for Joe Biden's presidency. Elon Musk waded into the debate with the new Twitter owner urging people to back the Republicans. But the First Lady, Dr Jill Biden, was having none of it. She went after the Republicans and painted a grim picture of what life in the United States would look like if they won. Extremists are putting Social Security and Medicare on the chopping block. A Republican majority will attack women's rights and affordable health care. That is just not fair. Still to come on the Smart 7, it's the return of Peter Kay, but it's the end for Southampton's Ralph Hassan-Hurtle. Right after this. Welcome back.
It's not been a great season for Southampton and it's been even worse for Ralph Hassenhuttl. The club sacked their manager in the wake of Sunday's 4-1 home defeat by Newcastle. Hassenhuttl, who was appointed in December 2018, will leave Southampton in the Premier League relegation zone with 12 points after 14 games. Their last win was at Bournemouth on the 19th of October, but it was their only win from the past nine matches. Notts Forest manager Steve Cooper reflected on the news of his departure. I guess there's always context to, to manager and, and, and doing his job. Um, it's obviously sad to see um, any fellow manager lose lose his job, which is obviously the case at Southampton, but um, do have a lot of respect and, and admiration for the job he's done at Southampton. Remember lockdown, all those long, long, lonely days at home? What got you through it, though? Well, apparently... It was Boney M. The daddy cool Rasputin and Rivers of Babylon hitmakers have been named the most successful black pop group ever. The lead singer Liz Mitchell reflected on why people rediscovered Boney M over COVID. The most important thing that we have is our souls and people were stressed. And the music that can bring you out of that dark place will always be um, helpful. And I think that's what happened. I think our songs were helping people to, to forget their worries. Peter Kay is returning to stand-up comedy with his first live tour in 12 years. It comes after the comedian pulled out of a sold-out tour due to unforeseen family circumstances in 2017. It'll be the Bolton Comics' first live tour since 2010 when he scored the Guinness World Record for the biggest selling run of all time, playing to more than 1.2 million people. Tickets go on sale at 10am on Saturday the 12th of November. Hey, when are you back on tour? Next month. When can I get me tickets? They go on sale on Saturday. Did you get your mum that bungalow? Yeah, she wants a new carpet now. He's finally back with his first new live stand-up show for 12 years. See Peter K live. This has been the Smart 7. Wherever you're listening, do us a favour and hit the follow button. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 a.m. Have a great day. Written, produced and published by Daft Doris.